as the surgery got closer up until that point, it had all just been words. And then you realize that day that you actually are talking about brain surgery and it's nerve wracking. It was scary going into that and not knowing um, if I was gonna get my child back out of it um, and, and if she was gonna be worse or if we were gonna have gone through all that for nothing. We had to make some special provisions because uh, she's so young. Uh, the normal way that we do this surgery is the patient is fully awake and interacting with us during the surgery uh, because if you're asleep, your brain's asleep and it's not making any noise. We wanted to be able to have Lexi as awake as she could be uh, so that we could get some sound coming from the brain. Can you move your leg, Lexi? There you go. You're doing awesome. Do that again, Lexi. It's important to be able to get right to the right spot. And we know approximately where to go, but every individual is different. So we really wanted to be able to get to the best spot in order to be able to help Lexi. There really wasn't a choice as to whether we would do this or not because, you know, this brilliant brain that's trapped in this body that can't move, it, it pretty much decided itself. The cells uh, in a cornicterous brain are not acting like they do in a Parkinson's brain or other dystonia um, uh, patients. They're different. And so that can be very misleading if you don't know that ahead of time. We very, very carefully looked all over the country at where, who we wanted to do this and where we wanted it done, and we pushed to have it done here. So we wait until she comes back, and we were able to pick the best contact, and we uh, turn that on, and I thought to myself, gee, that hand's not moving as much. It seems calming down. Now, I didn't want to think that was just, uh, you know, the power of positive thought, so I waited. But it's funny, each one of us, as we were watching her, later we said, did you notice? And everybody was seeing the same thing. So we could see right away that we were actually getting some benefit. <laughs> Obviously very exciting to see that she would have anything. Um, at this point, I can already say she's so much easier to take care of. Her resting tone became more like resting. Um, she's moving less. Some of her motor patterns are emerging. Um, we expect that to take a while because the only motor pattern she knows is the you know, jerky everything on. Um, so that's something that's, her brain's going to have to learn. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's all beautiful just like you. The biggest thing that we're seeing now is a decrease in the accessory movements, which allows her to start to have voluntary movements, do things she wants to do, instead of her body always doing things to her. So as she's been in her chair now, she can bend her, she loves to feel her head. She could never touch her head before. She's never touched her head. And she'll sit in the car and rub her hair back and forth. It's an evolving process, but an exciting one. These small incremental gains mean big things in Lexi's life, even if they're not uh, dramatic to the outside eye. Today, uh, she's just a very different looking child. Instead of being uh, stiff as a board and writhing, uh, she is uh, soft and just uh, sitting there with very little extra movement. I think really based on what we see with Lexi right now that uh, we are willing to move forward and look at other children. Uh, I think we're going to continue to watch and see how Lexi does, uh, but there's no question that she's already benefited from the surgery. I would love to be able to sit in an audience and watch her even on, in a walker, um, you know, You know, sit up on a horse or, or, or you know, do dance by herself without me holding her up. You know, every video I've got of us doing anything is me holding her. And she wants to do things on her own. You know, so that's what I want. I want to sit in the audience and just watch her. <laughs> right?